All right. Okay, so if we get the slides, it's me bigger. Uh, yeah, so um, call me however you like. Um, the thing on the left is my first name. The thing on the right is my last name. The thing in the middle is, is usually how people call me stuff. S-C-U-F-F. -F. If you ask me why, it's I was 14 years old. I was rapping and I needed a name that rhymed in French. So I picked up stuff because it rhymes with whatever. Cuff, stuff, muff, buff, whatever. Uh, I work for a company called Depup. And um, we do a lot of stuff that I cannot show you. Very frustrating. But uh, I'll show you in a moment. Um, let's start this um, privacy talk about Apple uh, and um, with basically um, the current debate uh, with a little video from Tim back in 2018. iPhones and iPads and Macs and, and HomePods and the watch, etc. And if we can commit you to buy one, we'll make a little bit of money. Right, but you are not our product. Right. You are our customer. You are a jewel, and we well, care. You, <laughs> we, <laughs> we care about the user experience, and uh, we, we're not going to traffic in your personal your personal life. I, I think it's an invasion of privacy. Except they tried to do a couple of weeks ago, but that's an interesting debate which we can speak about later. So when, talk, when I gave this talk about privacy on Apple, it was more like, like a straightforward privacy policy from Apple and they seem to, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard topic because if you want to try to protect our kids, but at the same time potentially have a way of breaking privacy, it's a very hard one. Um, but quickly about Depop, the company that I work for, um, what do we do? Um, is um, we avoid this to happen. You know when you um, have a trench in front of your house where there are all those pipes that goes with gas, which I hope in the future will disappear for obvious environmental reasons, and um, you know electricity and all those cables. We actually scan those pipes in 3D with augmented reality. We do, um, we do a bunch of machine learning on this. We detect where the pipes are, and we're basically um, uh, like maps for the underground. Uh, I hope that I can show you more of this next year. Uh, if, I'm, if, I'm, um, uh, if I have the privilege to come back here at DevBreak. Uh, we're also full iOS, which is why they hired me as an iOS developer, and we'll be soon fully iOS 15, because that's one of the privileges that I have, um, is I've been always working with companies where we uh, can work on the very last stuff. So uh, it's, it, it's very rewarding for a guy like me. Also, we are highly remote, um, um, and um, we also hire a lot of people in, in different um, positions. So who am I? That's an interesting slide. It's kind of a part of it is what people might call like the ethical bullshit. But first of all, as mentioned, I'm a French-speaking Spanish guy born in Belgium, living in Germany for the last 18 years. So um, hopefully there is a common point between me and Fries. You like them, but I'm not French. Um, and uh, I obviously love Europe. Um, I've been a um, developer for 24 years, so which makes me kind of a little bit of a dinosaur. Um, uh, and um, half of these, like over half of these with um, the Apple text, so which is why I really love my iPhone. Also, and this is where the ethical stuff and um, the kind of more radical stuff are coming. I've been involved politically since 10 years with the um, the German Green Party, so exciting times for me because there are general elections in two and a half weeks. Um, and I've been uh, six years a climate um, uh, activist and a refugees activist, um, doing also a lot of like uh, um, reports on, on the ground. Um, and I've been since eight years without any meat and five of these fully vegan. Right. So the point of this is that um, this is... Um, Ethics for the win. So this talk is much more than a technical talk, even though I will drop at your face a lot of APIs uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm still a programmer. It's a lot about karma. And speaking about karma, well, this is one book which is about karma, the book from, from Ron, which I highly recommend to get, go get one. I started reading it, and uh, I think uh, it's going to be very fascinating. Um, there's another book that I wrote, uh, which is about karma as well. And if you're fast enough and scan this, this QR code, 
um, then uh, you might get uh, one of these books. Um, the fun, funny story behind it is I originally planned to call the, the, um, the book Building Privacy into iOS and MacOS Apps, and as a subtitle, um, um, Karma-based APIs. And then the guys from APRES told me, oh, no, let's flip it around. Let's call the book Karma-based API, and the subtitle will be, this is something about iOS and macOS. So it ended up being um, a book which is, um, yeah, uh, teaching developers to do the right thing, and at the same time showing users, because you can read the book even if you don't know anything about iOS, um, to discover what you can and what you cannot do with, with iOS and with Apple technologies. All right, so um, what we'll cover is, in this talk is we'll cover um, the Photos API, um, which means um, we'll speak about the cameras. We'll also cover the Location API, um, and with a little bit of a video um, of, of Steve speaking about that, um, and, uh, and the MapKit API, obviously, so all about the maps, and the Contacts API, which is one of the oldest API on iOS related to privacy. Um, so if you want more in the book, I also have this sample app, which is, I call it my privacy because it's just testing all the APIs. In the book, I also speak about calendar and events, um, health and fitness, um, Siri and search, um, and um, um, HomeKit. So just check out in the book. Um, let's start with the strings. Um, and no, I'm very bad at playing an instrument except scratching. Um, but the first thing you define in an iOS app is you have, well, you don't have to define all of those strings because that would be amazing if you, or, or terrible if you have an app that uses all those privacy APIs. But every time you're going to have to do something with the privacy, whether it's about health, HomeKit, the location, calendars, or whatnot, you have to explain in plain English or in plain any other language uh, what you're going to do with it. And it's going to be presented, right? Um, so um, let's start with photos, and let's import, um, because this is the, the slides are going to be in Swift, which is um, Apple's main language in the meantime. Um, the first thing you do when you access the library in, um, as a developer is you ask the user for authorization. So most of you that are using iOS ha have seen this panel in some apps that ask you if you want to give access to this app. And what you get back as an, I, as, a, as an iOS developer is it's either not determined, so the user has not made a choice yet, yet, or it's denied or authorized, yes or no. And the thing in the middle, the restricted, is when you use um, a pattern control or a, a mobile device management, so the API is um, not accessible. Uh, and the new thing since iOS 14, so since last year, um, is this limited? So the user has authorized for limited photo library access, and I'll show you what it is in a moment. Right. Um, so this is the, the select more thing that you've seen since iOS 15. There is this very long thing you can set, which is PH photo library prevent automatic limited access alert equals yes. Um, if you watch the talk from Leah, you will know it's better to have a descriptive API than a short API. Um, but sometimes it's too long. And if you add this, it won't pop all the time to uh, basically ask you, do you want to add more photos? Do you want to add more photo? But uh, let me be clear, there is no way to like um, um, shortcut this restriction that Apple has, has put in place. Uh, I forgot to, yeah. All right, so let's, let's um, listen to what Steve was saying 11 years ago in 2010, um, and it's going to be a little bit um, low, so maybe the sound a little bit more upper. Privacy means people know what they're signing up for in plain English and repeatedly. That's what it means. I, I've, I'm an optimist. I believe people are smart, and some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them. Ask them every time. Make them tell you to stop asking them if they get tired of your asking them. Let them know precisely what you're going to do with their data. So that's, that's the thing is, um, back in 2010, uh, not a lot of um, mobile operating systems were doing that. There was, um, if I remember correctly, back in the days, Android was giving a lot of access without the user even knowing. And as a matter of fact, um, 
Steve is talking about location, which was one of the first API um, that had this thing. But the contacts API, which I will show you later, was not asking the user at all. So I remember being able to program as an iOS developer in, 20, in, in 2008, um, basically taking all the contacts of, of users, and users wouldn't know if, it, if I would have wanted to make this. Um, but um, the problem is, um, actually, from a privacy perspective, I don't want any apps to have control, fully con full control to all my library of photos. It's terrible, like all my kids' pictures, especially, or whatnot. Um, what I want is I want to give the app an, 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 an option to choose one app. And there is this option. There is this pick one and only one photo. For this, we have this thing called the UI image picker controller, uh, where you say, OK, it's my photo library or it's the camera. Um, and, uh, and then you, you get a delegate, which is this concept in, in, um, in, in, in the Apple world, uh, which is like a listener or a callback or whatever. And you present this, and then you get back um, um, the original image and potentially the edited image, because you've added something, uh, and the URL and whatnot. Um, and the last one um, is uh, for iOS developers as a reference. Is you shouldn't use this last one anymore, because it's going to be removed in the, in the future. The point of it is, if you use this API, you will um, be sure that you're respecting the user's privacy. Uh, and the other point of it is, from a user's perspective, if an app is asking full access to your library, I would say no. Um, so Photos UI is one of this um, framework which is uh, allowing you to have uh, like Chrome around this API. And there's this new thing since um, iOS 14, which is the limited library picker. It allows an app to have a limited set of pictures as an access. So, and it's enforced, by the way. Um, so, um, so when, when Apple released first this, this thing last year, apps like um, Instagram, for example, uh, who would have uh, full access to your library, um, they, they wouldn't anymore. They would have this panel, which I showed before, where you would say, um, only pick a certain set of, of pictures, right? So you can show only the pictures you want. Um, the, so it's new since I was 14. It's finally multiple selections, because previously, back in the days, you could only pick one, which was weird. And the really great thing is it's built in preview. Um, this is what's called um, 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 an out-of-process picker. So this is not your app having access to all those pictures. This is another process, and your app will only have access to those pictures that are checked, right? So let's speak about core location, because location is, is like a very, uh, very important thing, and I don't want every app to know where I am, basically, or every company, for that matter. Um, so since the early days of, 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 of iOS, since day one, actually, there was this, always this asking every time. Um, later on, they added, when do an app know about where I am? Always or only when the app is using. So I, a lot of time, I say only when the app is using, because I don't want an app in the background to have access to this. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's play another video from Steve about specifically this. Before any app can get location data, we don't make it a rule that they have to put up a panel and ask because they might not follow that rule. They call our location services and we put up the panel saying this app wants to use your location data. Is that okay with you? Every time they want to use it. And we do a lot of things like that to, to, to ensure that people understand what these apps are doing. That's one of the reasons we have the curated app store. We have rejected a lot of apps that want to take a lot of your personal data and suck it up into the cloud. A lot. So uh, there's one thing that drives a lot of people crazy about Apple and also soft Apple developer, software iOS developers as well sometimes is the restrictions, right? When you live in the Apple world, we you're basically under the laws of Apple's, and sometimes they are very restrictive, and you cannot do everything you want. But they can do a lot of things that you cannot do. But a lot of time, it boils down to the fact that Apple doesn't care about developers. They care about users. And I'm OK with that, to be honest. I, even if my life is sometimes harder, even though I cannot do everything that I would be able to potentially do on Android, I, I'm OK with that. Um, so um, 
the other thing that I wanted to speak about, speaking about location, because it's a very important thing, I give another talk now and then about um, um, energy optimization. So you can save the battery of your user, and at the same time, you can save um, not the planet, but our civilization. Um, and so for this, there is this API called a start location update and stop location update. So don't forget to stop when you get enough. That's why there is Michael. Um, and you can also find my talk about energy optimization on speaker deck. Um, and there is this very important um, API called uh, request location, this guy here. Um, it's a one-time permission ask to where am I, right? Um, there's another thing called region monitoring on iOS, which is basically, instead of uh, checking all the time, am I here, am I there, am I here, am I there, you can actually say, um, is stuff on, this, on, on the stage or not? And if I leave the stage, I will know. If I enter the stage, I will know. Um, that's better for privacy, and it's also way better for energy optimization. And also, please, please, please lower the location accuracy to three kilometers if you can. And we'll speak a little bit more about that now. Um, so the authorization looks very similar to what I showed before with the photos. You get an authorization status. And um, once you get that, you get the thing that I showed before where it says it's not determined, it's restricted, it's denied, it's authorized always, even when the app is not, it's not running, so in the background, or it's authorized only when it's in use. If you remember correctly, you, um, Steve was saying, ask them every time. It wasn't back in the days totally true, because you would ask people once, but it became true in the meantime. Um, so uh, the thing is, uh, before I come back to that, is uh, if you support the iPhone 6, seriously, really stop that, because if you stop supporting the iPhone 6, you will be able to use things like Swift UI, uh, because it arrived in iPhone 13. But it's good to know that if you do, region monitoring needs always. So if your user says they only want to have um, um, uh, location updates when your app is running, it doesn't matter if your app is running. If they didn't get access to always, region monitoring won't work in iOS 12. Um, there's this new thing um, that I showed you before, allow once. Um, uh, actually, I didn't show it yet, but I will show it after. Since iOS 13, so it's only asking once. And there is this very new thing coming in the next few um, days. Actually, um, iOS 15 will be released next week. Um, there is an Apple event on the 14th. Uh, called the location button. That's basically a button where when you click on it, you have access to the location, but that's it, only one time. Um, and also, as a general tip, um, try, if, 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 if you're an iOS developer or starting as an iOS developer, try to move to the current version of the of iOS every year just after WWDC. Like in June, if imagine back in June, if you were supporting um, I don't know, iOS 12 or 13, they announced iOS 15, so support iOS 14. The reason is, among other stuff, it's your chance to clean your code, because we've all been in the situation where we, we're using APIs which are 10 years old, and there is a way better API in the meantime. There's a better privacy API. Most probably, there's a more um, fine-grained API, so try to move. Um, the accuracy is the thing that I wanted to speak about, is um, in iOS world, this is the options we have. Um, that's either three kilometers, as I was saying, so it's, it's the better privacy-wise, it's also the better um, en uh, energy um, uh, consumption-wise. Then there is 100 meters, nearest 10 meters, uh, and so also kilometers in the meantime. Um, best and best for navigation. So. Um, this boils down all the way to a lot of the, the GPS uh, precise stuff. And for anybody who has been working with other kind of technologies, more military uh, technologies, they will know that even the best or best of navigation is not really super awesome, precise. There is no um, built-in technology in the iPhone which will give you the precise location to the nearest 10 centimeters or something like that. Um, which is a hint at something we use at DeepUp, Deep Up, which needs precise because I need to know if the pipe is there or there for the digger. And with a normal iPhone, there's no way to do that. Um, and um, now, um, 
if you, if you, I was making a wish in my book, and my book actually wrote, um, there's no way to, for the user to solicit its accuracy, nor a way to tell what an app requires. It would be a terrible UI, but it, it would be awesome if we could do that and make a wish. Apple made it happen. Actually, if you lower the accuracy, you make the privacy higher, right? So the location reduced is this thing where you basically um, have um, a, a reduced accuracy, which is a problem for the app, but not a problem for a user. So the user has chosen to grant this application access to um, uh, information, um, and the region monitoring and the beacon ranging are not available to the application. And also, the location estimates uh, will be about five kilometers. And the last sentence is very important. Um, applications should be prepared to receive locations that are up to 20 minutes old. So if you are a fitness running app, it's a problem. If you are a weather app, it is not a problem. It's OK to know what the weather will be in the coming 20 minutes. It's OK to know what the weather is in the surrounding five kilometers, unless you live in a very specific street which has an amazing weather. Um, so that's the gist of it. Um, so this is the, the allow once button that I wanted to show. But this is also the precise uh, on location that I wanted to show uh, here, this, this little thing. So it's up to the user to change this thing. It means um, it's not me as a developer, luckily, who gets to choose uh, what kind of privacy I'm going to what, impose to my user. That would be terrible. Um, it's, um, it's blocked by the system. Users get to choose, not me. Um, so let's speak about contacts. Um, the contacts API is kind of dear to my heart because um, for years, as I was telling you at the beginning, it was technically possible to be what I call the ugly developer. And I'm going to use this reference to a well-known movie uh, and start with the good and the bad developer. The good developer would go ahead and say, OK, I'm going to need um, access to that one person, but I'm going to uh, need access to only the, the first and the last name. Right? That's very good. It's very specific. The bad developer still will access one person, but will want to have all the information about this person. That's already pretty bad, privacy-wise, because the problem with that is that there is still, nowadays, no ways to know, um, as a user, which information an app is using. Um, and remember, there is always a UI and UX point of view of this. How do you show this? Are you going to show a list of, of properties that an app is using that would be kind of terrible. Um, so um, fun fact, you cannot do that in SwiftUI, but it's cool because we still have UIKit. Um, what I did in my simple app is I, 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 I have the search box when you type a name. And um, what I do is I do this, which I would say that I show an alert, and I add a text field. And once you type this text field, um, you know I use this text here. And um, basically, I, um, um, I allow uh, the predicate for this. So, and the predicate function looks like this. So it's a little bit of code, but it's basically, I am uh, basically um, searching in the unified contacts, matching this predicate, which is basically fetching Kate Bell in this case. And with the set of descriptors, which I gave, which was um, either all the descriptors, like all the properties, or only the first and the last name. All right. Um, let's. I think we have a little bit of audio now. We could make a ton of money uh, if we monetized our customer. If our customer was our product, uh, we could make a ton of money. We've elected not to do that. Um, remember, the main way which Apple does money is by selling pretty highly priced but pretty good hardware. It means they don't have to sell your, um, your, your information. And um, in fact, um, they don't really uh, do that. Um, and, um, and so this is, this is one of the, of, of the good thing of being so bad at uh, server-side technologies, I would say. Because every time there is an API from a server-side technology from Apple, I'm very uh, critical at this because I'm thinking it's not in their DNA. They're very good on device. The other thing is uh, because they're 
highly into privacy, and because they are mainly front-end developers, they do a lot of stuff on device, also because the devices, the iPhone, the iPad, are very powerful nowadays in terms of processing units. Um, uh, remember, at DeepUp, we do um, a lot of, of um, augmented reality, and we, um, that's, that's a lot of image to process. Uh, and we are fascinated by, by what we can do in this little package, which is an iPad. Um, yeah, I'll, I, I, I'll bring back the ugly from, uh, from, uh, from Steve Jobs. There was a presentation from the... It was uh, back in 1998 when they presented the iMac. He was saying this quote, which is funny. He said, the back of our machine looks better than the front of the PCs. Um, and uh, anyways, the ugly developer, coming back to this guy, um, because it must be a guy. There's no possible way that a woman would do that in the world. Um, <laughs> will basically, you know, rip all your database and suck it up into the cloud, as, as Steve was saying. And technically, when you give access to your full address book to, say, randomly WhatsApp, that's technically possible. Um, they don't really do it. As far as I know, they, they, they have a hash, so I'm not saying they're doing it. I'm just saying they could do it. They could do it tomorrow with a software update. So this is why I am very, very, um, 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 yeah, fine-grained in the permissions that I gave to apps, um, and I precociously select which app I give contacts um, yeah, and, and this is a messenger world, a big problem, because I'll give you another example. On Telegram, I always ask people, please write me a message, because I cannot write you a message, because I don't want to give access to my address book. The other problem I have with the address book is, if you give access to your, to your address book, it means my address will be sucked up into the cloud. And I don't get this. I I've, I've filed a, a, a report at Apple that it, there should be a way for me to know that you shared my contacts, because this is my data. So, um, so that's kind of weird. But anyways, let's get back that ugly once, once, one more time. Ugly. All right, so that's the ugly developer. Um, the contact picker is um, this one thing where you can for select one, only one uh, picker, right? So uh, only one um, person. Remember the photo thing where you get all the photos listed? Well, it's the same thing. You, you see all the contacts? It's so-called out of process, so it's not your app having access to all the contacts. You pick one contact and or more contacts, and this is what your app will have access to and not more. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's slightly technical. New in iOS 14 is we have a couple of stuff, uh, which is the so-called proactive keyboard. It means if you type in a, in a text field um, in, uh, since iOS 14 uh, something which looks like an email, it will uh, give you um, auto-completion, which, um, which is one of the emails you have in your address book, but the app won't have access to that information. It will just give you a text. The app will just get a text. Um, same with the telephone number, full street address, and all the stuff. So, um, and there is this autofill everywhere. So in any apps that use iOS, you can actually select like a, a, um, an, an autofill, like the first name, last name. But the app won't have access to it until you actually, as the user, decide this. Um, and so, yeah, generally think about granularity. You know, in terms of privacy, there is always this concept of do I need to have all this information, right? Like, do I need to know um, somebody's spouse uh, name? It's, it's terrible information, I mean, that nobody would need to know. Or, um, and, um, and new in iOS 15, uh, again, audio, um, on-device audio processing for Siri. So Siri nowadays in iOS 15, so as of next week, won't even um, send the audio anymore to the cloud. They do everything on, on device, on processing. Uh, that's already the case with text recognition in iOS 14, which is why text recognition, when you use the keyboard to um, dictate a text, is so quick. It's because it's all done on device, so no, nothing goes on the cloud. Um, you can also train um, 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 machine learning models now directly on the iPhone or the iPad. Machine learning in itself is a real, it could potentially be a privacy problem because it means you, you're potentially sending uh, in some apps um, images so that they are processed 
Um, and also, um, that's more of a user feature, but there is this thing called iCloud Plus, which main mail privacy pro protection. So you're, um, you can have um, a, a randomly generated email, which is not your email, when you send it for a newsletter, and it will land in your email. And also, they do a private relay, which is basically um, um, masking your, 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 um, your IP. Uh, it messes up a little bit of the online marketing people out there, but I'm cool with that. Um, and you can also use the camera for keyboard input in your app now. If you just have a regular text field, uh, you, can have, you can actually pop up a camera and do something like this, for example. I, when I came here with the train, uh, um, um, it, um, I was in, a, in the train station, and uh, it was in Karlsruhe, I think, and I just... Um, take this picture, and then I could select the text, and this is literally, I copy-pasted it. Um, and with that, uh, we're almost done, with uh, the exception of a couple of references that I will put, obviously, my slides on speaker deck. These are a couple of talks that I watch. Basically, I watch every year uh, every single WWDC talks uh, that talks about privacy, so you can, you can look it up. Um, and I want to play a last video because I think it's funny. Uh, and uh, American friends, bear with me uh, because I think this is so funny. Uh, privacy to us is a human right. It's a civil liberty and, and something that is unique to America. You know, this is like freedom of speech and freedom of the press and privacy is right up there for us. And so we've always done this. This is not something that we just started last week when we saw something happening. We've been doing this for years. Yeah. There, there, to conclude on this one, there is a slightly funny part of this, which is like privacy is an American thing. No, it's not. It's a German thing. Uh, I mean, so like 10 years ago, Apple was one of the first companies to, to speak about privacy in the US. Uh, it became a good thing, a big, big thing because of GDPR and all those stuff. And but it's just so funny because it's very like it's very like entertaining and 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 kind of brainwashy thing. But the end of the of what he says though is really true. Like they were speaking about this privacy thing uh, before anybody else was doing. So I'm not saying Apple is perfect by no means. And um, again, the current debate is interesting on this. Um, basically, detecting child pornography pictures in your library. Um, and, um, but I'm, what I'm saying is that in terms of privacy, if you got to elect a mobile platform for the moment, um, this is definitely the less worst of all. Um, and that's it. Shokran, thank you very much.